The vast majority of behavior problems in the classroom involve minor breaches of discipline. These incidents frequently originate in the classroom situation itself and are within the control of the teacher. Disciplinary problems in the classroom are symptoms of underlying weaknesses in total learning situation. Mr. Grimes, mathematics teacher, is displeased with the progress of his ninth grade class in mathematics. You see what low grade you made on your weekly mathematics test. More than half of you failed. Most of those who passed just got by. Nobody had 100%. This is the poorest class I've had in a long, long time. Most of you have no foundation at all. Now the trouble's with your attitude. You don't pay enough attention in class. You don't do enough work outside of it. You don't know what the word study means. You haven't the slightest idea. Don't you realize that mathematics is an important subject? I tell you right now that unless you get over your lazy habits and come up to the standards I've set for this class, many of you will have the pleasure of repeating this course next semester. Well, what is it? A note from Dr. Williams. All right, that's all. I have to leave for a few minutes. Now, I want you to open your books and work out correct solutions of the problems you missed. I can't make any sense out of this. I might as well quit. Gee, he never even took up this third problem. It's a jib. He's got me scared to death. I'll just never pass this course. What's the use of taking this stuff anyway? I'm afraid to take my paper home. He's just a sourpuss. Mm. The trouble is, you don't know what the word study means. You haven't the slightest idea. Oh, I try. <laughs> this. What kind of behavior do you call this? Wait a minute, you stay where you are. This is the kind of behavior I might have expected of you. All I do is leave the room for a few minutes and what do I find? Confusion, disorder. And you, what were you doing? I was just going... Going to what? Throw the eraser, I suppose. It's a good thing I caught you. I'll make an example out of you. But I... That's enough out of you. Leave this room and report to the principal's office immediately. Well, hurry up. Don't take all day. <laughs> Who did that? All right, since you think it's so funny, the whole class can stay in for 45 minutes this afternoon. Then you'll see how funny it is. Remember, the whole class is to report back here at 4 o'clock. Where were we? I can't come. I've got a newspaper out to do. I got football practice. He can go fly a kite. Mm. I have a piano lesson. I can't miss him. I think he's horrible. Stop that whispering. Mr. Grimes did not have a happy time of the week. Who dropped that book? All right, I'll wait till you're quiet. Many of you failed to hand in your homework yesterday. Now, you know that that... What is this? Stop that noise! Two detentions. Three detentions. Leave this room and don't come back until you're ready to apologize to me. Well, this is going to get us nowhere. 
Maybe we'd better go back to see if we can't find some of the causes of this undesirable learning situation. Just what was Mr. Grimes' purpose in making such statements as these? This is the poorest class I've had in a long, long time. Hmm, this is hardly the way to win friends or influence people. You don't know what the word study means. You haven't the slightest idea. Might not be a bad idea to show them how. I tell you right now that unless you get over your lazy habits and come up to the standards I have set for this class, many of you will have the pleasure of repeating this course next semester. What kind of motivation is this? To what does it lead? The trouble is, you don't know what the word study means. You haven't the slightest idea. <laughs> this reaction is the answer. It was the result of Mr. Grimes' provocative remarks. Now, take this. It's a good thing I caught you. I'll make an example out of you. Oh, come now, Mr. Grimes. By taking it out on the boy, aren't you covering up a symptom of your own deficiency? <laughs> who did that? Yes, who did? Some boy, probably but the chances are it summarizes the feelings of the group. There is an unwritten code covering such situations. Why try to buck it? All right, since you think it's so funny. The whole class can stay in for 45 minutes this afternoon. Mass punishment is a dangerous weapon and doesn't work too well. Two detentions. Three detentions. Leave this room and don't come back until you're ready to apologize to me. It's a long way to the end of the term. When will this end? Thus, what should have developed into a sequence of pleasant and valuable learning experiences had deteriorated into a series of disagreeable and injurious personal tensions. This is all wrong. Need any of these incidents have occurred at all? Suppose Mr. Grimes had tried another approach. Most of you are disappointed in the low grades you made on this test. So am I. Nearly all of you had trouble with that last problem on ratio. Now, perhaps I didn't do a good job explaining ratio. Now, ratio is commonly used in everyday life. Mother uses it in the kitchen when she takes a recipe for a big cake, and uses proportional amounts of ingredients to make a little cake, or vice versa. But Let's suppose a recipe called for eight cups of flour and four eggs. I wanted to make a cake half that size. How much would I use? You'd need four cups of flour and two eggs. That's right. You boys use it in the shop and you read a blueprint. As you know, a blueprint's merely a scale drawing of something that's usually larger. Suppose I had a blueprint of a bridge that's going to be 100 feet wide. But on this drawing, the bridge is only 10 inches wide. Now, how many feet would each inch represent? Ten feet. That's right. Now, that's in ratio. Now, let's see where we made our mistakes. The problem was this. What is the ratio between four and a half yards and one and a half feet? Now, you look terribly at four and a half and one and a half. It said the answer was three. Well, that's where you fell into a trap. What you forgot was that before you can divide, you have to reduce all units of measurement to the same unit. Now, what's the unit here? Three. That's right. By guy, I sure fell for that one. First of all, let's change four and a half yards into feet. That gives us 13 and a half feet. And now we can divide 13 and a half feet by one and a half feet. The right answer is nine. Wow, well, I see where I made my mistake. Now, I want you to look over your papers very carefully and see where you made your mistakes. I'll come down the aisles, and if there are any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. Yes? No, from Dr. Williams. 
All right, thank you. I have to leave for a few moments. On page 15 of your books, the first three problems are exactly like number one on the test. Suppose you do as many as you can until I get back. I get the idea now. I sure messed up my test paper. I'm glad he's going over these questions. I'd never make head or tail out of them otherwise. You know, I'm beginning to get some sense out of this. I hope I do better next time. I'd hate to bring another paper like this home. The way he explains it, it doesn't seem too hard. Oh, come on, cut it out. I want to do these problems. Oh, let's have some fun while Mr. Grimes is out. Who wants to do these old problems anyway? Now, you know where that board eraser belongs. That's right, put it there. <laughs> Grimes sure caught him in the act. Oh, Grimes is a pretty good egg. See if you can do the next one. Classroom control and learning efficiency are products of good teaching. Learning must be made meaningful. Interest in work for which learners see a purpose provides its own discipline. But in spite of interest and meaning, it must be remembered that some incidents will occur. Skill in handling such occurrences prevent their growth into problems. Well, that's a pretty good catch. For a moment, I thought you'd miss. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I owed him the apple. Well, I guess a fellow's expected to pay his debts. I'd suggest, though, in the future, you do your baseball practicing outside of class. <laughs> a friendly attitude with a sprinkling of humor goes a long way toward winning the regard and cooperation of the class. For respect is a more desirable molder of behavior than fear. The development of mutual understanding between teacher and pupils will help eliminate disciplinary problems. <laughs> 